Um, just when I don't turn the chat on every day, and so I miss chats. Just turn your mics on. It's easier to be part of the system. So oh yeah, it just helps a lot. Um, okay, um, I'm going to switch gears here for just a minute. This is going to be a little um, video momento. Um, and it's really short. It's not very long. And this is where I get trouble with my videos because I show someone else's video and then post it in my video. Okay, ASTME is the Associated Steel Metal uh, Steel and Metal Work Engineering. Uh, some of you belong to that before you don't your career. Those are the basic commands for 3D operation. Um, they covered almost all of them. Now, the technology there she used was animation. However, with the um, prolification of things like the Oculus and other 3D virtual reality components, we are about five years for you to be able to just sketch in space and have it create virtually without using a mouse, without using a stylus, but just with your hands. So that will happen before most of you finish college. So kudos to you on being a cutting edge. That's really kind of fun. Um, what I want to do um, today, and I know some of you are not done, but how many feel you're done with your bird house? Cool. Good. You're not. I don't want you to be today. Today, I need to go through and get you kind of jived up and a little jazzed up with some what you can go to with it. So like I said, we're going to take quite a few days on this. Um, that's one of the reasons why I started it here at the mid quarter and not the end of the quarter, because getting you up to speed is going to take a little bit of doing. So uh, and then advanced students, if you want to do this today as well, um, it might help your SOLIDWORKS skills. And we'll kind of build a little bit with you. What I'm going to do, let's first start um, mechanical one. Let's have questions real quick on your birdhouse. Any? Yes. What are the size constraints? Size constraints. Let me pull those up again. Got to switch my screens around here real quick. We'll go into Canvas for you, go into your course. Hit modules because it's faster to go this way. Scrolling down. down. We're actually in week eight, this is where Build a Better Birdhouse is. We skipped a whole bunch of weeks because I'm condensing. I got tired of all the busy work. Sorry. Um, right here is your birdhouse lesson plan. Click on that. 
So your constraints are here. Oh, wow, that's a lousy constraint. Okay, so when you're building your birdhouse, your maximum panel is seven by 15. I put three eighths on this, but I think with what we're going to try and do, I think eighth inch is one, then allow you to make more mistakes because it's cheaper wood. So if I need to give you two sheets of wood to cut your birdhouse out of, it's the same as buying one sheet of three eighths. Does that make sense? Because I, I, I expect that some of you will make a mistake or two and that's just fine. Um, so this is the back. Now, the dimension that is given here, this says five and a half by three and a half. This is your maximum, okay? You can use less. That's, that's within your purview. And you can rotate. It could be 15 by seven as opposed to seven by 15. When you're looking at numbers, the first one is your X value. The second one is your Y. The third one is your Z. So in other words, horizontal, vertical, and then depth. Okay, so can I get that? Width, height, depth. Okay, put that in your baby brains, it's on your state test. Width, height, depth, okay? So if you notice, I pretty much give you the same dimensions for just about everything, okay? It's, it's a birdhouse, okay? For some of you made these in Cub Scouts or Girl Scouts or Brownies or, heck, maybe your mom just said, go do something, get out of my house and build a birdhouse, okay? Um, again, we need the hole for the bird. A two inch will kind of control what size bird gets in there. You could end up with a barn owl in a two inch hole, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, barn owls can, they're mostly feather. Those things are so ugly without their feathers. They're really weird looking bird. Have you seen a, well, let me see if I can find one for you. So we want this to go along here and um, kind of how that works through there. Then you need to figure out how you assemble it. You can use finger joints, you can use um, tabs, you can use glue, you can use finishing nails. You just have to let me know what you want to use on it. Okay, we don't have a full, it, the lab is mostly stock, but occasionally you'll have some things that you want to use. And you can kind of create that. And then this is just, we're gonna model it first, and so you can figure out how it's gonna to go together, okay? We're gonna use the laser to cut all of your parts. So we're not gonna worry about um, saw safety skills. I just don't wanna squeeze that in. Hopefully you guys did that in your seventh, eighth and ninth grade classes, because I don't wanna do it. <laughs> I just don't wanna do it. Use me that way. All right, let's see here. This is an owl without any feathers. That is a featherless barn owl. That is, that is weird. And so the knee, this is actually the ankle right here for the bird. That's their ankle. And then this is the toes at the end. Their um, knee is up inside, up by their belly. It's kind of, a, they're weird, weird animals, but super ugly without feathers. You know, you pluck that bird, who's gonna want to eat it? Just gross. So anyway, there's a barn owl. Um, so they can fit in some pretty tight spaces. You want to eventually with a lay it out so that you can maximize your cuts from the laser. This will be more of about how we're going to arrange our manufacturing process to cut these. Most of these will go will cut in a mm, probably let's say about 20 minutes for each one to cut. Uh, so we'll be a little bit of time building these, I guess, to the end of the quarter. Yes. Am I fine to not worry about the first part, part of the like I'm going to be using by 20 Correct. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, each of you are going to get a, a sheet of this Baltic birch. That'll be 24 by 18. Um, that'll allow you to do some things like decorative motifs to it, dress it up. If you don't want it to be outside, then you can make it to be in your room. Um, I liked, uh, when I went to college, I would make things to hide money in because, um, you know, it's good to have a cash stash somewhere that you don't want your roommates to know where it is. Yeah. So as long as you don't exceed the 432 inches, uh, then you're still okay? Yeah. I yeah. Worried. You get a little stressed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, anytime you engineer, allow for overage. Always plan that there'll be something that's going to take more than you need. 
that's why you get a sheet. Um, and that's and and for me because I'm the teacher, I plan for mistakes, so I plan extra sheets. So it's kind of how we kind of work that. Again, your hole could be, you know, ovalish. Um, birds have a hard time with holes that aren't round. They 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 just don't make a square hole for a bird. They won't know what to do with it. It really throws them off. They, they're used to looking for like knot holes in trees that tend to be more of the round variety. Square holes make birds a little, they, they kind of pluck their feathers out. With them. So they're not so good. So. And then if you want to be able to clean out the bird nest year to year, you need to plan for a way to open and close the, the housing to get out. Now, again, you have the option to not have a house that's make as a bird feeder. Um, bird feeders have their own challenges. Um, fortunately, here in the Salt Lake Valley, we don't have a great number of squirrels. Uh, I grew up in Idaho where we had brown squirrels everywhere. And if you put a bird feeder out, you're feeding the, bird, the squirrels. These squirrels are vicious little thieves. Oh, yeah. There, there's nothing that squirrel proof. Squirrels and raccoons are extremely more intelligent than credit for. So. so that is your side. You seen... Yes. Oh, uh, there's a YouTuber, Mark Robert. He oh. tried to solve the, the squirrel bird feeder thing. Yeah, that was good. We might watch that one a little bit later. Uh, Mark Robert is a Utah native. He worked for NASA. He helped design the, the rovers that are on Mars right now that have lasted 10 years longer than planned. That's really good engineering. Um, he is in the process of trying to become a high school teacher. Really? Yeah, that's a pay cut. But his YouTube channel generates about a million dollars a year, so I think he's okay. Really? Yeah, he only puts out one video a month. Okay. Yeah, he's a pretty, pretty dope kid. So, yeah, so if you're good, you know, there's still ways. But yeah, he generates a million a year. That's kind of pretty sick stuff. Oh, 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 what did I do? So I pushed the wrong button there. Hang tight. All right, we're going to go back to this screen, close that down. Okay, here we go. So this is kind of the end result you want to get. You want all six of your sides. This is an elevation of the side view. So it's this, this side right here and this edge of the roof. That's all this is. This is about as far as I can really go in 2D. And, and that's, that's what we did for... Wow, we've been doing that since the uh, Egyptians did the pyramids until about 1979. Was this is how we built? This is what you got. This is what you built with. And then all of a sudden we said, "There's got to be a better way," and we added a z-axis. Okay, so you guys ready for something new? Okay, advanced. If you want to do this with us, you're more than welcome to. It's we're gonna go over um, quite a few uh, features. Uh, kind of maybe get you up to speed a little bit faster in what you know with SolidWorks, kind of review it a little bit. All right, so. Excuse me? Yes. Um, are we going to build this, the online students, or no? Um, well, that would be my plan, is that you come in on a Friday and do it. Okay. Unless you have a opposition to said thing. One, I'm I'm vaccinated, so you, you can't do anything to me. So it's up to you at that point. In fact, every teacher in Granite District and every most of anybody that works with students, they've all had at least one shot. They'll all be finished with the shot by the end of the month. So by the end of February, every employee that works with students in Granite School District will be vaccinated. All right, so yeah, that's kind of plan. What What's your feelings on that, Frank? Good, I was just wondering, just wanted to make sure. Oh yeah, we want to make it equal for all, just not, well, sorry, not equal, equitable for all. Let's get the right terms. No one gets equal treatment. We can get equity treatment, but not equal treatment. Okay, good. All right, now, um, for you two online, if you haven't downloaded SOLIDWORKS yet, this will be a little bit of a trip uh, for you. So let me show you in the course where that's at, um, because you're gonna probably need that. So if you go to, um, oh, wrong button, slowly teacher. Still wrong button. 
this one out. If you want the software, you need to go in, you're going into Mechanical 2. This is the software you're using for Mechanical 2. So then jump into there. And then when you get to your um, window here, oh, where did I put that at? Why did I not link that? I found it in the modules. Yeah, I, I, sh I was going to put a link here. I'll, I'll link it, but let me show you where it's at. It is in the modules. So you do modules. Um, and then we scroll pretty much um, all the way down, like way down. And it's the, so you have your, it's the, when you get to MEC2 course introduction, there's the software download instructions. For all of you that are here and for Mechanical 3, this is the link, this is the serial number. It is good for one year. So it'll expire around November of, in November of this year, 2021. So you're welcome to download this and use it at home. I would encourage that strongly. Again, it will not work on a Chromebook. It will not work on a Mac. Um, most engineering software is PC-based. Notice when Andrew gets authority, he talks louder. That's how he's doing. Okay, here we go. Anybody, we're good? Um, this does download easier than AutoCAD does. So that's a plus um, on there. RAM, mm, it'll run pretty good on six. How much RAM do you have? You should be fine. Yeah, AutoCAD is, and AutoCAD's a memory hog. All, all the Autodesk products are, they're just bulky. Okay, so, so when you open up SolidWorks, if you guys would just do that, we're gonna open SolidWorks 2020, and it's gonna look like a DS. Big, no, actually it's not, it's gonna be, look like this. Okay, so go ahead and open up um, SolidWorks here. Uh, SolidWorks is what's called a parametric software. Everything you've learned in AutoCAD applies. Every CAD software uses the AutoCAD interface. AutoCAD was first. It became the dominant in the market back in the 80s. When the copyright expired, everybody else got to use that core program. So the core program exists in every CAD package. We call those Boolean commands. You might have talked about them in, a ge in the geometry class. Boolean commands are three-dimensional geometry. And that's what that video showed. Things like extrude and scale and sweep and loft and uh, revolve. Those are all Boolean commands, okay? And I think you'll have some fun with this. So um, let's see what we wanna do first. What we're doing today is demo only. It is not a project. It is a demo piece. And we're going to create, uh, hopefully, um, something spectacularly cool. And I'm not sure what it's gonna end up being. Okay, so is everybody in SolidWorks? Okay, then come around, make sure we've got the software. Um, don't try to install here.
So the new computers are in. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so the new computers are here, but when we switch between third and fourth quarters, we'll put them installed in. Um, if you want to come in and help, you're welcome to. It's okay for that. Um, but that's what it is. And so, here we go. There's a screen machine. All right. Okay, so let's do a little organic design here with it. And oh goodness. Okay. So here we go. Um, when you open up SolidWorks, it's going to ask you what kind of file you want to create. That's what this window is. And so you either make a part, an assembly, or a 2D drawing. Now, this is how it kind of works. Everything starts with a sketch, which is what you've been doing in AutoCAD. We call those sketches. They're just lines. They don't have any depth. And so that those sketches, we become parts. OK, so we're going to be moving in next week. We'll bring your AutoCAD file into SolidWorks and make them into new parts. Okay? But parts become assemblies. So if we're making an engine, we're not going to draw the engine all at once. We're going to draw each part of the engine. Yes, Mark. Huh? Yeah, so it's a back in the basket. Um, so we're not going to draw it all at once. We're going to draw each piece individually. That allows us to have multiple engineers working on a single project. Each one's responsible for an aspect of it. Okay? So once you create assemblies, assemblies can be combined together. You can have multiple assemblies in a system for the entire car has an electrical assembly, has a drive assembly, has a transmission assembly, has a brake assembly, and all those assemblies get put together to make the car. Um, if that's the career you want to pursue, if you want to go into that kind of work. Um, likewise, if we're working on an oil rig, we have assemblies that take place there. Each type of pipe system requires a different set of assemblies. Okay? The 2D drawing is still how we document the construction process. It's still how we document copyright and trademark. Everything goes back to 2D. No matter how far we're going, it still comes back to two dimensions. Okay. So it's a little bit like, well, I'm sure glad we went there, but now we come back. Just right up here, friend. Sorry. So sorry. So, so sorry. So we're going to start with a part. So let's go ahead and just hit OK. And I'm going to enlarge my screen a little bit here so I can fill this world. So let's take a little bit about where you're at, okay? Because navigating um, is a little different uh, in SolidWorks. SolidWorks is the industry dominant. Even though Autodesk has a counterpart to it that you may have used in junior high called Inventor, Inventor is Autodesk's version of SolidWorks. Inventor doesn't have a lot of employers using it in this part of the country. Um, there's, there's, they're out there. You can get jobs using just Inventor, but most of the engineers here in, in the West are using SolidWorks because it's been around longer. And um, SolidWorks is always innovating and always doing new things. So what we're looking at here is the starting page. Okay, questions? Yes. A login? We need to log in too. Oh, and I just lost my screen.
Quest Park. Okay, so we're going to see them visit us. Okay, so SOLIDWORKS is the big red cube with SW on it on your desktop. And I will see what we can do about getting um, getting that fixed. And I need another set of sticky notes, I guess. Um, one second, we'll get going. Here. Go ahead and press the part um, button and we'll get in here so you're all I need some of these ones to fix. By the way, it sounds like these two kids are going to the surplus warehouse. If you need to help yourself, if you're using a fancy machine, yeah, these are seven years old. So. Okay. Here we go, folks. Fun day. Excuse me. Yes. Um, it's asking me to um, sign in to download it, and I don't know what the password is. To doubt to sign in. Yeah, it says uh, when I um, click um, when I'm on the SolidWorks, it says to enter in the um, serial number, and then I press login, and then it pulls up a thing that says one account and I have to enter my email and password. Well, that's a password or an email you set. There, so, you're supposed to enter the serial number and then it doesn't ask for the login. Yeah, so if you have the serial number right here, then that's what's in the course. That's that uh, 9020013215467722. So if you just hit yes, after you fill this part out, then that skips all the other. If you go the other route that you're going, it's going to charge you $6,948,000. Okay. So you don't want to do that. 
you want i clicked the um but i did click the yes i have it already okay uh, i'm running out of fake names here let's um let's see what i can do Um, are you using your personal email? Uh, no, I'm using the school one. Use your personal email. The school's already got an account. It won't give you another one. So you have to you, you on your if you're downloading on your own computer, always use your personal stuff. Okay. And then you're doing the student yep. here. Request download. Uh, I didn't like my fake name. And then once you hit accept and continue, you should be good to go. It, it, um, you just hit download. It's not doing that for you? Uh, it pulls up the SolidWorks and I'm able to, and it pulls up a WinZip self-extractor. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. program. It goes to your download folder, and then you open that up to install it. Did you not install software before? Oh uh, no, I I did. I just it, um once I um open it up, it says it pulls up SolidWorks uh, installation manager. Right. And then I click next. Okay. Um, after it's selected for uh, install compute install on this computer okay and then it pulls up um solidworks and it says 3d design yeah and the box is uh check marked solidworks okay. and then it um has little box and it has six boxes for numbers to go in that's the serial number that's your type and then once i put in the serial number the what um, once i put in the serial number what do i do after that just follow the steps through it should just take you right to finish the download oh never mind i didn't see the next button on the bottom right okay scare me man you've been doing it for 20 years and you're scared okay we're good all right yeah just follow it through you should be fine okay here we go there's a big boring part in the video i'm not editing it out because i don't want to you can just deal with it yes my dear. just Click on the screen. Don't do don't do the update. I know there's a mandatory update. Don't do the update. Okay. Okay, Mark. Mm -hmm. Bring the volume down three volume levels. There you go. All right. So in here, let's kind of look around what we've got. The thing you want to look at is across the top where it says Solworks in red. This may be um, compacted if it's not pinned it'll change. So if I pin it, I'm going to get all my options. If I unpin it, it's going to come and go as it floats. So just kind of keep that in mind. There's a pin. Most of our ribbons will compact and compress. So it's just a matter of your personal choice, how you like that to look. You have the standard Windows um, tabs across the top, file, edit, view um insert tools simulation uh dan this is what you're going to be looking at on your bridge is these simulations okay um windows windows allows you to see multiple files open solidworks will allow 999 different files to open at one time that means you've got a really good amount of ram okay that's all the cup on ram if you've got the minimum requirement ram don't do it um the, the, only do that if you're on a server, okay? Don't do that on a home computer. You'll you'll crash and, and life will be miserable for about a week, okay? Then you have a home button. There's a new create, new create does just what we did. Brings you right back to the start of your file, okay? Pretty easy, easy stuff. Open a file, save a file, print a file. Now you can print off paper and do 2D images of what's on your screen, or you can send it right to a 3D printer. So you can directly go from here to there, okay? Um, this little guy right here, this um, red and green stoplight is a rebuild button. Rebuild is a math 
um, get out of jail free card is what it is. When you're doing a lot of 3D modeling, the computer has to keep track of every coordinate for every aspect of what you're making. And as you're going through the process, you might remove information from that. So for instance, if I make a cube and then put a hole in it, there's data that's still kept for what the hole became that I don't need anymore. And the rebuild removes the math that's not needed. It helps keep your file size smaller. And so occasionally it'll ask you when you do a save, do you want to rebuild your project? Always hit yes. Otherwise it's gonna keep, uh, your files gonna get really, really large and hard to manage. So when it asks to rebuild, just rebuild. If it's glitching a little bit, do a rebuild and take out some of that extra program, that code that's just kind of bugging you down. It's just a way to keep your file clean and organized, okay? This over here is your file properties. If you need to go in and change any settings, and then we have options. And we'll look at options and stuff more in the fourth quarter than we are for this project. There's not a lot to do with the birdhouse. It's a pretty simple project, but some of the things you do when you do your whistle, uh, that's gonna be kind of a fun project. I think you guys will enjoy that. But today what I wanna do is get you comfortable with this type of drawing, okay? Now, when we work in AutoCAD and we draw, we draw everything by size. We start a line and say, go six inches, and start a line, go four inches, and start a line, go five. We tell it the exact length as we go because AutoCAD is not parametric. Okay? That means we have to draw things as we want them, kind of an old school type tool. In, um, in SolidWorks, it's not like that. And that would be the same case for programs of the following. 3D SketchUp, which is a Google base. You can use you can use Google for these assignments too. Google SketchUp works just fine. Um, it's a little bulky to work around. It's not so refined, but it will work for doing this project. Um, you can do like Inventor, Revit, SolidWorks, Studio Max, Maya, uh, any of the animation programs that are taught upstairs all do the same thing. So you're finding that this career that this is an introduction to this engineering world branches out into animation, it branches out into cyber, branches out into a whole bunch of different areas. Everything's kind of connected skill sets, okay? Now, the next row, we have tabs at the bottom. Right now, we're in just the standard flow simulator, which does absolutely nothing for you unless you have something to flow. So things that flow are air and water. So we can simulate water going through a pipe. We can simulate um, air going through a duct. We can make, we can simulate water going around a boat bow. Uh, we can see if the boat's in a sink before we build the boat. It's always a good thing to know. Yeah. Kind of a good thing. Um, there is a project that um, I usually do with SUU in a non-COVID year that those of you who are here for Mechanical 3 next year, uh, we build cardboard boats, okay? Now, if you're taking car Mechanical 3 now and you want to retake it, there, you're perfectly welcome to do that. You could do it as a capstone course and you still do these um, SUU competitions. Um, the cardboard boat is a boat built for two people. It is only held together with cardboard and duct tape. That's all you get. Okay. Um, we take the boats down by bus to SUU. We usually stay the night. And then we... Um, float them the next day in a race against most of Southern Utah. Uh, typically we do okay in that, um, but they do take a lot of planning, a lot of math. So kind of keep that in mind. Competitions this year are a little on the hard side because everything's virtual and everything we do is physical. Is that working, Andrew? Yeah. Feel good about it? Yeah. You didn't hurt your sister now? Probably not my sister, maybe a brother. Brother, yeah, you'll probably put a weld. It sounds like it's in a weld. Yeah. It sounds pretty tight. Okay, so let's move over across backwards. So flow, flow simulator, is that what you guys start out on with yours? No, okay, you guys probably start out here, features. Okay, features are 3D elements. So sketches are 2D elements, features are 3D elements. So that's kind of the difference. SolidWorks generally starts in features, which is kind of odd because you can't do a feature of nothing. You have to create a sketch first. And I, I, I've asked, several years now for them to flip the order of these. And they said it's alphabetical. I said, no, it's not. 
look at the, I mean, that was the first answer I got back. Well, we're trying to keep it all alphabetical. I'm going F, S, M, E. That's not alphabetical people, but that's okay. That was their answer. So that means they're not gonna fix it. They don't want to. Um, so in your features, you probably only have four items that are active. One is to extrude. And we saw that where she pulls stretch. And I'm really hoping to be long live enough and we can do that in CyberMist and actually build things like they do in the movies. Uh, we're very, very, very close to that. Thank you, Facebook Oculus. And then Revolve lets you spin things around. Over here is our reference planes. I want you to take a minute when you look at the reference plane option, because this is one of those lastly taught things in most classes that end up being the most important things you can use. So if we hit the little down arrow, the reference geometry controls planes. What is a plane? And I'm not talking about an arrow plane. What's a plane? Yes. So like the two dimensional, like the two dimensional, like five or something. Could be, yeah. Two dimensional, yeah. That's probably a good way to put it. Two dimensional side. So two dimensional surface. So on your monitors that are on your computer, you have a plane that goes across the top, one that goes down the side, one comes across the bottom, one comes to their side. That's four different planes, two pairs of parallel planes, but you also have a bevel at the back that's another plane. Planes are infinite in number and infinite in their angle. So we usually think of planes being flat like a piece of paper that you draw, but everything is planar. And that's where we get into string theory and all that good fun stuff. All planes do is give you a place to draw on in space. So they're the location of space represented by a 2D surface. Then you have axes. Axes are center points. They do not have to be on the object. So in our solar system, where is the axis for our solar system? In the sun, okay? But the sun also has its own axis that is not the same position as the solar system axis. How can that be? Gravity, yeah, our, our solar system is not circular, it's elliptical. Whoa, which is really complicated math. So I'm glad I'm not that kind of engineer. Um, our planet has an axis that's tilted. At least we're not poor old uh, Neptune that's laying down. Neptune got hit by something at one point and just fell over dead. So if you guys remember, we had an earthquake oh, it's been a few years ago, 2007, 2003, with Japan, big old tsunami flooded out Japan. You guys remember that? It tilted our axis by almost a half degree. So part of what we're seeing as global warming is we're not at the same axis we were 20 years ago. We have tilted. And something as simple as an earthquake can tilt the earth. Imagine what happened when the meteor hit the planet and killed the dinosaurs, how much that tilted the earth. So. We have to look at all sciences, not just one, when we find out what's going on with the world around us. Okay, so part of this change in our, our climate is because of that. Our winter is a little delayed, and we found that out. Our winter used to start somewhere around middle November. We're now seeing our winter start more in January for us. And that will probably be the case now forevermore. Because okay, unless we get another earthquake in, where does that have to be? It's in the other side. Australia, to ship this back, it's probably how it's going to be. So always look at all things when you're making reform decisions, whether it's a political candidate or whether it's a science guy. You have to look at all of it. You can't just go to one source anymore. Everything's related and connected. And if that's all you leave from my class with, is get all the facts before making those decisions. My biggest thing. Coordinate systems. Like in AutoCAD, we have a coordinate system, X, Y, Z, Cartesian grid. We can have unlimited coordinate systems based on what we need to have. And we can also move them around. They don't have to be set right in the middle of things. Okay, so we'll look at that. And then you have a point that's a reference that you need to remember. I need to come back to this spot. You can place a point there 
to get back to it to finish out what's going on with the prop part. Okay, now for all intents and purposes, um, the MBD dimension, SOLIDWORKS, add-in, simulation, MBD, analysis, blue beam, and flow simulation, all those are irrelevant to you right now until you have assemblies. You need parts fully built, okay? So we're gonna now click on sketch and we now get our two-dimensional drawing tools. Do they look somewhat familiar to the ones you saw in AutoCAD? Very similar, right? There's, well, there's line, there's rectangle, there's circle, there's arc, there's polygon, there's ellipse, that's a spline. Okay, I'm gonna talk about splines for a minute. Um, I'm gonna show you so you understand what's going on. Okay, so just kind of watch here in a second. When you do a spline, you have to first tell what plane you're working on. And this, and I'll come back to this with y'all in just a minute. Um, I'm just gonna put one here on the right side because it's stupid. When you pick a point and you pick a next point, all of a sudden this line has mobility. What's happening here is every pixel that makes up that line has its own set of coordinates. Okay. So when you're looking at something like this, and, and just kind of watch what the potential here is. Right now, I'm on the right side plane drawing this shape. But I can go in and do something stupid like split my world up and jump ship and draw a different set of planes as I create that shape. And um, even more serious, underneath your, oh, where's the other sketch? Uh-oh, which there is, there it is, the possibility that if you hit the 3D option on this, be very, very careful not to do this, okay? Not to be in 3D, because what happens is, as you might be here on the left side and drawing your shape, but you can jump over and draw on every view at once as you just switch screens. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense to you here, but if I go back to a single screen and I rotate it, that's what I just did. It's very hard to keep track of what you're doing if you fall into 3D by accident, okay? Now, 3D sketching exists for an upper level type of modeling called surfacing, which is how we do things that are organic, faces, fabric, um, rocks formation, things that have no set form to them. It's an organic tool. So use it as such. Uh, people use SOLIDWORKS in design fashion. They use it to design tents. They use it to design um, all kinds of different things out there. So I'm going to that. I'm going to just kill this one and start my new one again here. Because I want to do it that way. So while we're here in our sketch tools, um, you do have a couple of ones that are a little different, like slots. Where would I use a slot? What's a slot? If you can watch the animation, it might give you an idea. Where would I use a slot? And would this work on a birdhouse? So a slot gives you an open, an elliptical opening that things can slide back and forth on. So for like size adjustments, for example, you could shift the size and tighten the bolt, uh, lock it in place. It may be to help align things better. Maybe it's a seismic design where you need the connection to be a little loose so it can move during a motion. Uh, so you have that. You also have some edit tools once we design. And the big A here, that is for text, just like it is in AutoCAD. So the text here is a little bit more exciting to work with because you can make it 3D. It's kind of fun. Okay. All right, so let's kind of get started with our first little practice piece. And here are your options for what we're going to make. We're going to do a demo, well, try that's the right word, democratic. Does that still exist? We still have democratic societies? Yeah, we're going to do it democratically. Okay, is the United States a democracy or a republic? Um, what does that mean? That we, we take, we vote for people to represent us, we vote on this. Okay. And if we vote wrong, how do we get rid of them? We assassinate, right? Yeah. That's totalitarianism. Okay. 
So in case you wonder what mom and dad are complaining about at dinner, there's a move right now to pick that rum cabin set up. Uh, it's funny. You know, it's democracy at its finest. You know, we don't like someone, fire them. Okay, so here's the choices. We can make a lamp. We could do um, a snowman with a stove top hat. We could do, oh man, I had them all in my head a minute ago. The lamp, the snowman. We could do a, a mug, like a coffee cup. Or we can do, I want to do that. Want to do a snowman? Okay. Anybody else? How you feel? Lamp, snowman, coffee cup. Let's pick up for three. Sorry, Jason. How many for uh, snowman? Sure. Okay. You want the lamp? We'll, we'll probably get the lamp in too. So lamp's kind of fun. All right. So when we're working on here, um, what we're going to first do is we're on the sketch tab. We have to activate the sketch button. So we click the button. At this point, you'll see yellow warning signs. They're just like when you drive along the freeway, there's a yellow sign that gives you information. This says select a plane to sketch on. You can't just draw willy nilly, you have to pick a starting point. Since we're gonna do the snowman, we're gonna start um, at the top of these hats and work our way down, okay? Because I just wanna do it that way. Seems backwards, but you know, it's cool. So we're gonna bring our cursor, we're gonna pick the top plane. It will shade when we've activated it. Front, right side. Now the right is also the left, the front is also the back, and the top is also the bottom. They all intersect at the Cartesian grid at zero, 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 which in our solar system is Earth because we're arrogant human beings and everything starts with us, okay? which carries through with all of the Star Trek universe. It all bases on Earth. Big flaw in Star Trek. Okay. Let's select the top plane. And once you select it, it will rotate around and leave you a origin point marked by a red coordinate system right in the center of your screen. It is always a good idea to start here because it's just like where you guys are about to leave home. Home is always there for you to come back to. Okay, so it's always good to know where home is. Now, you again, like in AutoCAD, this drawing area is infinite. So knowing a start point helps. So we're gonna start with a circle. We're gonna go to the circle tool. And if we look at the circle tool, we only have, well, two options. You can draw a circle by the center of the radius or by three tangent points to something else that exists. That's it. AutoCAD, you had eight, which is why doing the AutoCAD certification exam is very, very complicated path. There's too many choices. Fewer choices make your design a little easier. So do a center radius and we then bring, oh, look at our cursor. It's a pencil. Isn't that so cool? It knows we then draw, we made us a pencil. And it's got the circle icon attached to it so we know what we're drawing is a circle. I mean, this is like, Keep it simple, stupid, right? Bring your cursor down, put your pencil on the origin point. It will turn orange, a little orange dot there. Left click once and drag out. Now, unlike AutoCAD, I don't put a number in. I just make a circle. Just make a circle and click off of it. So I right click and hit select to cancel the circle command. Make a circle. Just any size, doesn't matter. In fact, I'll say this quite often, you can giggle at it now, but size doesn't matter at the beginning. People laugh more in the 80s than they do now. It's kind of an old joke. Okay, we good? Everybody's got a circle on your screen? Everybody that's sitting by someone else to watch has a circle on their screen? Okay. This circle is blue. Blue is a color indicator that says this circle is undefined. Oh, that's a bunch of pull back. Yeah, just call it a circle. I defined it, right? What defines a circle? What's that? It, it's a circle, right? What defines it? Well, in 
Everything over how small I as an axis, the thickness, yeah. So we're talking mathematically here, actually. It has the shape of a circle, but it's not mathematically defined. In order to mathematically define a circle, it needs either a diameter or a radius, both of which are missing. And since they're both missing, all I know is that this starts at the center point and goes around in the circle. Okay, which is the definition to say a definition, which is really wrong, but I don't know what else to say it. So right next to your sketch, so notice the edit sketch tab is highlighted. That means we're in sketch mode. Once that's turned off, you can't draw. So we have to be very careful with where we draw. I'm gonna try and go through that with a snowman. Um, we're gonna put the whole whole spiel together on him today. Okay. We're gonna give him arms, we're gonna give him nose, we're gonna give him a carrot, we're gonna all the stuff, okay. Big old carrot. Maybe we'll make him spin too. If you click here, we have smart dimensions. Smart dimensions work with parametrics. They are much more advanced than what the dimensions you've used on the V block or your um, birdhouse system. So we click on smart dimension and we notice our cursor's changed to the pick arrow and the dimension icon. Now, we have to pick the edge of the circle. When we, we did want to pick something, it's in a highlight orange. So we select the edge of the circle and we get a dimension. Now, this gives me a diameter. I can also place it out to the side, up above, or as an arrow. So I can, any of those are fine and completely acceptable. Um, you should never, ever create a model without smart dimensions. It's what holds your value together. So when we place this dimension, wherever you want to place it, in whatever form you want it to be, once you place that dimension, a text box opens up and we get to define the size. So I think what we're going to do is make this top of his hat is what we're drawing here is the top of hat. Let's make it two inches. To do that, just type two and enter. Boom. Your circle's now blocked. We have defined it. We know where the center is and we know the diameter. Those two things are now fully defined. The circle must have a center point and a diameter or radius. Okay. Woohoo. Okay. Yes, sir. I can't get Can you turn the work? Smart dimension. Wait. Little so let's let's catch out here for another week. So we're gonna use sketch again, smart dimension now. Okay, so you clicked off here at one point. In order to go back in, we have to right click and edit that sketch that you created. Then we can do smart dimension. This is I hate filters, by the way. I always forget that. Okay, so what's happening here, so you guys kind of know, is occasionally if you bump the wrong key on your keyboard, it moves you into a filter mode. And filters uh, mean you can only select one thing. And that's whatever you're filtering for. And they are a pain in the neck to turn off if they're not turned on the right way. So just find it.
a circle doesn't have an edge. So when you shoot for an edge, yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. Whoa, hands up everywhere. It's like popcorn going off the wrong side. The mic is going to turn off. Okay, you're filming that too. You have, if you turn off the smart bench, you have a pink funnel. That means you are in a filter mode. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
It's going to be a slow. Why don't you go and look on some your shoulder and I'll see what it's fixed. It's not for me. Um, um, uh, 12 by 24, 12 by 12, 12 by 4 by 8 foot. This is on a road. Just go, go sit by someone else. Um, like just down the road here and watch what you can Because that's just going so slow, you're not going to keep up. And I'll get a fix on that too. <laughs> okay, sorry about the pause there. All right, what we're going to do is this is the top of the hat. So go ahead and turn off the smart dimension. You do that by clicking on the button again. And so it's either gray that's on or gray that's in turn off. Now your mouse, just like an AutoCAD, is pretty powerful. So if we push the mouse button, the roll button in, it's gonna do a zoom, a kind of a quick zoom. But the rolling is what zooms in and out. And it will zoom up wherever the cursor is. So if I've got my cursor out the object and I'm zooming away, it's opposite of AutoCAD, so it's a little tricky. But if you have your cursor off the side, you're not you're gonna lose your part. If you have your cursor by your object, you can zoom up on the object. But it, it zooms on wherever the cursor is. So kind of practice that just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little. Now, the other thing about your mouse is there, there is an, um, a couple of things that we push the button in on that row button. It's a, a rotate. It's a, what we call orbit, 3D orbit. And you can spin your 2D object around, okay? Now that can be really dangerous, okay? Because once you get off your orientation, you might lose track of which way is up and that'll throw you off. Okay, while we're here looking at orientations then, so you can, you can rotate to look, you can zoom in and out, up above your object, there is two magnifying glasses. The first one is zoom to fit. That just fills the screen. The second one is zoom into an area. So you can window an area and zoom up on that. The third is go back one view. So look at what you've done before. Everything OK? You leaving again? OK. okay. Um, then you have a section view. You can't do anything with a section view just yet. We'll look at that once we get some parts built. Then you have your dynamic annotated views. I don't use this one. One, it confuses me because they're dynamic. That means it's changing on the fly and it's, it goes a little quick for me. So I, I don't use that very much, but you can activate it. And what it does, it runs through all your views and make a little animation for you. Um, I, I don't use it because it's hard to set up and it's relatively new to SolidWorks, about a year old. The next one is your view cube, this view orientation cube. This one is your life stage. So we hit this down arrow, there's a blank there. Now there's a couple of things that you have to decide uh, for your own usage. You still have in here the 
go back to a new name view, that means you're saving a screenshot of a view to come back to the reference, okay? The next one over is this cube. If you'll click on the view selector cube, that'll put a 3D cube around your object. Now, I don't like this one personally, um, some do. If you pick on an edge, you can rotate based on the orientation of the cube to what you see. And that, that works fine for a lot of people. If you like that kind of navigating, that's fine. It's a little harder to work with in 2D, but um, it's there. I usually turn mine off because I use the layout, the, the um, third angle projection layout. So on these cubes down here, there's left, front, right, back, top, bottom. That's simple enough I can understand that. So we go back to my top view and I'm back to where I started. So I will almost always use the six cubes, the six planes to work my way around. It's just easier. It's what I grew up orienting with. And so it keeps all straight. Okay. Now the next one over is a display style. This again is a preference. You can have it so that your 3D objects are shaded with edges shown, shaded without edges, shaded in 2D wireframe, shaded with the hidden lines shown or hidden lines shown as solid. You will look at these as well um, as we get going in there. This next one, I need you to be careful with, okay? So this is where the filtering gets into play a little bit. This is our way to view what's on our screen. And so there's things like if you turn certain things off, you won't be able to see them. So in this case, this one here, Well, these are your axes. What, this is a permanent axis. This is a temporary axis. Coordinate grid, I can turn that off and on. Points, um, your, your referencing or your constraints. So perpendicular, endpoint, midpoint, that turns them off and on. No, you can leave it on. I, I, I need to, let's see how it shows. There's mine's on now. I turn it off because it gets kind of, it'll get crazy in a minute. Um, um, but I need to leave it on for you. So that should be on. So these constraints, this constraint here is an, a line and a line that comes to point. That means you're tying it down. It's like a little knot. And we tie the center point of the circle to the origin point. So it's a constraint of a fixed point. And there's a lot of them. And we'll be looking at those as we go through all this. Um, yeah, so just kind of be aware of these. They can be your best friend. But they can also be like those sweet and sour gummies. They're evil and then they're good. A little commercial. Just kind of keep that in mind. The other two are for um, view displays. We'll look at those later. Okay. I want to extrude this hat. We got a two inch diameter. So I figure if we extrude this four inches, we should have a good size stove top hat in proportion. So now we have flipped to features. So we turn on our features tab. We still have limited options. So we're going to do extrude boss base. We click on that and it's going to drop us into a 3D angled isometric view. It's going to give us an up arrow showing the direction the extrusion is going to happen. And it will give us a preview of the current setting. We're going to change all of this because we're working from the top down. That's a choice. It's not always that way, but I'm doing it backwards to make you not conform to normal society because we've got too much conformity in the United States right now. That's my own political view on it. Stop being copycats. All right, so this arrow has a lot of power to it. You can take that arrow, you can stretch it. You don't have to type any number at all. There's a ruler there. You can adjust and put things right where you want. It's kind of like watching the prices right and higher and lower than higher and lower. That, oh, you guys don't watch prices right now. You can guess the, the price. Okay, that's one way. Oh, good. I, Andrew, I love you so much. I, I'd adopt you if your parents let me. I need a new son. Oh, uh, like I need a new hole in my head. Um, <laughs> uh, my son's well moved out from heaven. Now, when boys get older, they get a little cranky. 
or might be experiencing that yourself right now. Okay, the other way to set size is over here on our control panel. So we have direction is what we're looking at here. Um, here on the far left is an arrow. It used to be black and blue and they changed it to black and white, which is really black and gray. It changes your direction. So it's a toggle to change the direction which you're going. That's what that does. So we want it to go down. Now, because I stretched the arrow, mine's gonna be a little stupid looking to have two arrow heads, but that's okay. So I want it to go down. Then under right here, if you're giving it a set space and size, you want it to be on the word blind. That means it's blind to the computer because the input needs to come from you, the user. So the computer can't make it up. But if you hit the down arrow here, let's look at all these options you have. We can extrude something to a vertex point. We can extrude it to a surface. We can extrude it so it offsets from a surface. We can take it up to a body. Now body is like a feature, but bodies tend to have multiple things already attached to them. They're a little more complex shape. And occasionally you'll just have to switch your mode into a body form. And we'll try and make that happen um, today or next week to so you experience that. And then my really favorite one is there's mid-plane. And mid-plane goes two ways at once. It's kind of funny. I mean, it's, I mean, ambidextrous is good. For right now, let's just go to blind and set the value to four. Okay, so this is gonna be, really, it's just a rod, a dowel, a cylinder, whatever geometric term I call it. When we get our size set, hit the green check mark, and it's now solid. So like the pan right and left? Yeah. Um, you want a pan, huh? Yeah, yeah, there's not one of those in this. Yeah, there's not a pan because you're in 3D space. If you pan, does are you going up and down, left and right, back and forth? It doesn't know. Pan doesn't exist in 3D. It doesn't exist in AutoCAD either. So if you want to change, your, so if you're over here and your views over here, take, put your cursor on the object and then zoom up on it. It's all about the zooming to manage get around. There's no, no pan in 3D. Panning is a two-dimensional constraint. And when you're in 3D mode, it just doesn't know what you're talking about. Okay, sorry, kind of throwing you a little curve there. Okay, we have a solid object. Now, while we've got our one cylinder, Let's take a look at the section guide. The section guide's kind of fun. I, I like, yes. You did extrude. We just went through, we hit extrude. Um, okay, so we did uh, features, extrude. We set the blind, we flip the direction so it's going down, set the value to four, and then hit the green check mark. Did you get all that? Okay. We then go back to the section here because I want you to understand what we're doing here. When I click on section, down on my plane, you, you have a front plane, the top plane, or the right plane. And you just choose which way you want to cut it. So right now I'm in the front, which means I'm cutting it directly in half because I started this on the origin. Another really big reason why to start your drawings on the origin. It keeps you centered. If I switch to the right plane, it just, or the top plane, I'm going from the top, right, so from the side. So my top plane, that's my, I drew there and went down. So it's going to be the very top, okay? Now, here's where you can have some fun with section. So I'm going to take my top section view, which is the very top of my cylinder. It has an arrow on it. I can slide that down till there's nothing there. It's more Exciting when I go this direction, I can see all the objects or abracadabra, none of the objects. But the shadow's there, so it exists, but it's invisible. All or nothing. Kind of fun. Something to do to kill the time when you're waiting for you to get to the next step. Just make things appear and disappear. All good stuff. Now, it's right here. This little guy right here at the top. Now, if I don't hit the green check mark, that means this is just temporary. I can do whatever I want to it and just kind of look at it and say, watch, it's gonna grow. 
Here it comes. Oh, so much time today. If you hit the green check mark, the view becomes locked as part of your drawing until you take it off. So I usually just do that for preview and then I hit the red X and I'm back to normal. Okay, no big deal. We now need to put the brim of our hat. What shape should the brim of the hat be? A hexagon. That's kind of pushed the envelope a little bit there, man. Okay, so top is up here. This is my top plane. You need to, when you draw in SolidWorks, you either need a plane, like top, front, left, right, or when you create, or a flat surface. I cannot draw on a rounded surface. Not physically possible. Okay, remember that. If the surface is rounded, you can't draw it. You have some that have just a very gentle slope to it, and you go, it won't draw. Why won't it draw? Why won't it? It's because it's round, man. You can't draw on a round surface. Even if you get a tattoo, they stretch it flat. There's those that have tattoos. You understand what that means. They sometimes I have to stretch a lot. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be watching TBS. There's some crappy shows. All right, we're going to draw on the bottom. So I'm going to use my mouse. Push the button in and roll it back so we can see the bottom. I'm going to start a sketch. So sketch tab, sketch button. Select the bottom of my tower here. Well, I'd sure like to look at that straight on. Oh, wait, I know how to do that. I go up to view orientation and click on the bottom view. Oop. Now, you know you're in the right view because X is going to the right and Y is going up. If X and Y are going down, you're in the top view. You want the bottom view. Make that happen. And the request is made to make a hexagon. And hexagon is the devil sign. That's six sides. The word hex means to vex or curse someone. And that also means six in Greek. By the way, it's not the sign of the devil, so you're fine. Okay, so we go over here, polygon. The default size is a hexagon. Woohoo. And we just need to worry about whether it's inscribed or circumscribed. Is that marker, Andrew? That you oh, gave mark. <laughs> okay, the word circum means circle. The scribe part means to draw. If we change the scribe part with scission, that means to cut in a circle. For those that are giggling, there we got that out. Now you know what happened to you. Can you remember? Good. By the way, there's a reason they do that in the first two months of your your life is you have no memory engrams. You can't make a memory the first two months of your life. Not possible. Can you imagine the trauma we'd all go through being born. Oh, your head smushed, <laughs> and they get stuck. <clears throat> That'd be awful. No one wants that memory. So your brain won't let you memorize anything at that point in life. <sighs> Smart brain. Okay, we're gonna do an inscribed circle this time. And we're gonna start on the origin again. And there's our hexagon coming out. Uh, we wanna make it larger, but we don't know what size. So it doesn't matter. You can make it small, you can make it big. Just make a hexagon. I don't care what it looks like. Size doesn't matter at first okay size matters later that was isaiah this time what you're you're just contagious man you even got corona all right smart dimension once we get our shape drawn if we look at this there is a solid blue hexagon and a center line circle so this is what inscribed means. The circle is inscribed inside of the geometry. Circumscribed is the opposite. The circle is on the outside of it. So this is being based by the distance across the flats of the geometry, whereas the circumscribed is across the points. So circumscribed gives you a larger piece of geometry than the inscribed, okay? Uh, both are valid uses and they, they have specific uses. So I'm gonna do a smart dimension. I'm gonna dimension the circle, not the hexagon. The circle is what controls this. Okay, did you know you can make a hexagon or an octagon with a compass? 
That's how they're originally done. About 30 minutes, make each one. It's about the end of that. All right. So we get our size. Our skirt, our tower of our hat is a two inch diameter. What diameter for the brim of the hat are we going to go with? Any number will do. Three inches. Sounds good. Three, we go with first. So we place the dimension, type in three. And that looks about right. Now, at this point, we're going to talk about constraints. So I'm going to turn off my smart dimension. And I want everything to stay kind of aligned because right now it looks to be a little tilted, maybe just a little bit. And if I want the two sides here to be perfectly aligned with the center of my, my cylinder, I can do that as long as I don't delete the circle. Now, this happens to a lot of students. They don't want the extra lines. So they delete this circle out and then they go, my octagon fell apart. It's all eight legs. Do a new one. Okay. So a constraint forces things into being. And so if I just have none of my draw tools active and I select a side, I get these constraints. These are relationships. So relationships are how we control the nature of the, the geometry. So there's a constraint on here already that relates the side to the circle. That's what this little guy is saying, hey, we're related, but you're like my fourth cousin. So I really don't want to own you, but I need you to my family tree. So you just stay hidden, meaning this lot circle here will never print off. Can't be made into a solid object. That fourth cousin that no one wants to talk about, usually the redheads. That's for you now. Where's my redheads in here? So I told you the redhead story this class yet? I, I think people did. I told you that class, yeah. Yes, sir. Need help doing that? Okay, I may go back and help him, but why don't you just force it vertical? And that'll just square it up. It's a little skewampus, it'll square you up. And then we get this vertical constraint. Okay. Anybody? Uh, oh, Buck's hands up. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I accidentally was like frozen to try and do it, okay. and I went out trying to. You know, you get to start, start all over. See, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. But like, I can't. It's still like. Yeah. 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 Lose the network. No, look, we're running out of RAM. You got a lot of other stuff in there. Yeah, I'm about to pull out of class. So, you're in that round. Yeah, some of you might be running out of Oh, you didn't evolve. How special are you? No, you haven't got to recharge. Those are saying that I can't. Okay, once you've got that, well, I'm going to change this size. Thank you. Okay, um, give me the diameter of it so you know what size the size is. Because I can't cut down the laser. Yeah. So for 
these what are you so what you're looking at is so standard this is standard this is standard from you just we just need to start what's the um if it's not listed it will always be a those are bolts okay so a is exterior b is interior okay what's that what's that what's that okay you did a sentence to basically smart mention two circles place the dimension you can still even see. Oh, you got out your sketch. Let's look at three. Close your sketch, right click. I use number locks, so don't protect numbers, you've got to put your number locks on. Okay. Uh, it's a view. So we want to see the bottom. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's I think it's you can pick the circle of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Starting the sketch. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what some of you are experiencing right now is a lag that's happening on your drawing. And what it is, is you're running out of RAM. Because we've got AutoCAD right at the same time. Typically, we won't have both open. So I think what we need to do before we move on is go ahead and open up your AutoCAD file, save it, and then close AutoCAD so you have more RAM. That's kind of what's hitting a few of you. It won't be an issue next quarter. My chair is right there. Okay. Now, for the rim of the hat, we're going to go ahead and extrude that. Um, Let's extrude it. So features, extrude boss base. It's gonna have the exact same value as our last extrusion. That remembers what you did last. Don't just get have it end to end to end to end because you'll get this giant thing. Okay, so let's, um, for this extrude, let's just go 0.5. 
a little chunky, but it lets us do some other things here. And hit your green check mark when done. And that now locks these together. Okay, so we've got a hat built. Um, there's some things you can do to the hat, um, make it a little more smooth and so forth. We'll come back to the edit sides of things. We need to create the body of the snowman. Um, that's gonna be our primary focus right now. So we have to make a plan. Um, how many segments in this body are we gonna put? Three, okay, it's traditional American snowman, head, body, butt. Okay. Ah, uh, snowman. <laughs> okay. Um, so, do you want to do them all individually or all at once? All at once. Who said that? Way to cut to the chase, man. Okay, here we go. First thing we want to do is get ourselves oriented to face the snowman. So, go to your view orientation and hit the front view. Okay, and then you can push it back a little bit because it's kind of big. Now we're gonna do a new sketch. This is gonna be a little bit of a trick to, because I need to draw on the front plane, which is right here. That's currently turned off because I don't, it gets busy. It gets a lot of clutter. And so um, what we're gonna do is do, just kind of follow the steps here. It should work. Praise be all students here and now. May you never cower down. It's an old, old, old thing. It's back in the Revolutionary War. Um, so we want to do sketch. Start the sketch. This is what plane? Oh, oh, all my choices are gone. They're they're hidden from me. I can't make a choice. Oh, yes, you can. Right here, it says the name of your file and has an arrow. This is your floating directory structure. Pull that out, and in there you'll see your three planes: front, top, and right side. Child, why? What's up, wife? Uh, uh huh. Is that a wooden value? 
Yeah, in there. Oh, it's a broomstick, man. Um, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you make it okay. Uh, give me the length and diameter. I'll find it. Okay. And then I'm not. I'm not done. I know. For this, uh -huh. um, I also need like the chunk that I cut out. Uh huh. So can I send you the parts as well? Like like solid parts. So what we're gonna do? Too bad a little bit. You're gonna take the dowel. You're gonna cut a notch out of it. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not done. More. Um, why? Why? And why? So, and then I have to drill those. Oh, yeah, you have to drill those. Yep. Lots of drillings going on there. Yep, yep, yep. So happy. Yep, yep, yep. So, fortunately, we got a drill press. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. Now, I'm going to give you, um, we picked the front plane. So, we got our cursor, our, our we are um, the coordinate system at the top of the hat. Woo! Right here, we're all losers. Look, see big L. Now we want to keep this body all centered. Yes. Are these new or old? These are new and old. How come? Because I've got three at the same time as one and two. You have what? I have a mechanical three and a mechanical one and two. So I didn't buy enough computers. Um, well, that's all the computers can fit in. Well, I bought you 36. Yeah, that's all it fits in here. But they should all be in. Oh, they haven't put any in yet. Oh, I thought you were oh, students. Okay. Oh, no. I've got new students and old students. Sorry, guys. So when you did your new ones, can I have two of your old ones? Uh-huh. Okay. I, I guess. And then I, I know. And then I need to ask you an auto test question. Okay. But that will be later. Okay. I just yeah. wanted to get rid of them. Oh, yeah. We're not going to do that until quarter, so I have some days. Yes, sir. So the digit there is the uh, the whatever or the coordinate the, system. Yeah, if it is it, it's centered, but it's not in the same place. It's like it's down here. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's okay, so to relieve your concerns, if your coordinate system is not at the top of the hat because you you made a mistake, that doesn't make you a bad person. It just means you weren't focused, but it still works. As long as it's in the center of the cylinder you're fine, okay? Now, we want the body to stay centered on the hat, okay? We're not gonna do this whole sloppy eye Joe thing, okay? So there's a tool that we use to keep things centered. That means you gotta create an axis line. We do that with what's called a center line. In AutoCAD, we call those projection lines. We have center lines, but they're different. So it's a little different how it works. We use the center lines because they're gonna revolve. So we go to our line tool, hit the down arrow, you have line, center line, and midpoint line. Now, midpoint line happened last year. It's a new tool. I don't know if I like it or not yet because I haven't used it enough. When you pick a point, it sends a line in two directions infinitely. And I mean infinitely. It's huge, okay? so. Um, and I made a mistake the first time I used it to take a chunk out of it. I couldn't figure out why my driver is this little teeny tiny thing. If you've got lines that go infinitely and you try to zoom up on it, it's going to try and put the whole thing on your screen and it can't. You get this little teeny. So be careful with the midpoint line. Okay. Just turn that out. We're going to use the center line. And the center line is going to start with wherever your origin is and bring a line down. It's gonna be blue. It's a center line, just like we did in AutoCAD, but this line cannot become a 3D object. So just bring it straight down. You know you're going straight if you have a yellow box with a vertical line in it. Super important. The length of the line does not matter, okay? Doesn't matter. No matter whatsoever, okay? Just put a line in it. This is defining the center of the body. Okay, now we decide we want to do these all at once. Woohoo. So we're going to start constructing three circles. 
Now you guys know what a snowman looks like. So I'm gonna start with the head and then do a circle on the line we just drew anywhere except do not put it on the yellow square. That's the center of the line, which means you won't be able to move the head to the right position. So anywhere on that line except the center square. Draw a line, don't worry about the size. Draw one circle, draw two circles. And now you've got the line, you can kind of project down. There's these little projection lines, just like an AutoCAD and draw a third, make it the size you want. Just make these three circles. Then you can come back and while you're in this design mode, you can say, well, gee, this head's a little big. He's kind of arrogant, let's pull. You can pull it down a little bit, kind of adjust it to where you feel good. Do the same with the next, make it feel more proportional. You've made a snowman. Um, my snowman don't look like this. Mine are just stack the snow, make a comb, put a head on it, go home. I did, I'm never liking to be a snowman. Now, if this guy's not in contact anymore, you can move him up, move him down, move him up, move him down. Don't worry if the circles overlap, okay? We're gonna whack it all out here in a minute, okay? So create what you want. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some smart dimensions on here because I want to see what I've done. So this guy here, oh, well, let's just make that four. Okay, that works good. This one here, so I'm just throwing dimensions on and rounding. This one will do seven, sounds good. This one here, no, oh, it's almost 12. Well, let's just go 10 then. <laughs> nope, not so good, we'll go 12. Okay, so four, seven, 12. Um, I think there's a ratio with that involved, but that's okay. So just kind of create those circles. Any way you want to go, I see your hand and they're ignoring you because that's a long walk. What happened here, man? I don't know your next bit chart here. Where you view up front, what world? In your center line, you're not going to have a sketch. Sketch here. Yeah, you don't have any red arrows, but you start a sketch. Where are you sketching? I don't know. How about the front? Well, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Good. 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 Is that a question of the upper green ever signed green blue? Oh, 
Yeah, well, okay, uh, let's see. Are you in, you're not in sketch to the gray. So you have to come to this sketch right here, get it? Go back in the sketch. Now you're actually, and you can tie this center to this edge. Connect it there. So if I pull that, it's just going to be here. So we have to do here on yours. We're going to and so on this guy right here. This guy, so they're all connected. So what you have to do for this is disconnect this one. Is that good too? Yeah, you have to link the yeah, so take these out. Where's your cell? Yeah, right. Let's get out of here. Oh, no. Okay, so let's go back to your front view. And we want to do a stretch of center line from your origin straight down the circles. They're pushed down the line. So that's how it's more center. And so this guy here, he's not, so you can go up here and just come down. And then the next level, come down. Put the line in the next one. So they don't connect together. Okay. So how did you get this line? I drew it. Line south. Oh. Okay, everybody, you good? Okay. All right, now we're gonna do a little um, surgery, which is kind of fun. I think kind of in a weird so way. Is that a hand back up? No. Oh, good. I didn't want to come over there. Okay, so on the one I've drawn, because you're all a little different, I don't know why, I guess you choose what to follow. I guess it's just like cats. No, it's more like it's more like ducks. You're not cats, you're ducks. Okay, here you go. I want this center line now to go down so it goes through all of my circles. So they take the end point. There's a little blue dot there. When I put my cursor on, it turns orange. I left click and I drag that down so it goes through every circle. Okay, super important. Okay, so do that. Every kosher, copacetically acknowledging that you follow the direction. Okay, now next step. Up here, the hat, I really, I could probably live with that. Going up into the hat makes it look a little more normal. Okay. If your circle at the top of the head, if it's above the brim of the hat, you need to position it so it's below this edge right here. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. It's kind of weird. Okay. I think most of you are in the case with that when I walk through. Okay. Now we're going to clean up this drawing. So we have hoop, 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 not circle, circle, circle. That means we don't learn how to trim. Now, trimming, if you remember in AutoCAD, was TR, enter, pick which thing, cut with, remove. You're going to like this a lot. Okay. So, trim is the scissors, which is always good, especially for um, Elias as he thinks about circums. So, click on the trim tool and you get options. You have a power trim, a corner trim, which is your fillet command, trim away the inside, trim away the outside, trim away the closest. Whether you trim away the closest, Maybe because that's when you'll use most often. So we click on trim the closest, and we're gonna remove everything on the right side of the line. So just, and if you put your scissors by it, it'll highlight with a reddish orange color. So just snip, 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 snip. And then come on the right side, and anything that's in this little neck area, snip those out. Snip, snip, snip. Oh, oh, so stop spying. Just snip away. So you got hoop, hoop, hoop. Clip, clip, clip. Just snip, snip, snip. 
So apparently people are already scavenging the computers. Happy day. No, it can step in the hat, yes, because you don't have a line to snip it to. If I snip this, I'll lose the whole thing. So when you put your cursor over it, it'll highlight what's going to be removed. You could draw a line right through here if you want, but I think you'll like the outcome better if it goes up inside. It'll look more normal. Okay, are we good? All right, friends, turn off the trim tool by hitting the green check mark or clicking the button again, which I will make you happy. And we're going to go into features. And we're going to go revolve boss base. And it's going to say, hey, buddy, you've got a line that doesn't exist. That's your fourth cousin twice removed that doesn't really exist in your family line, but we're going to treat them like they do so. Hit, yeah, I know. Just do it. And it'll make you a snowman. And once you make you a snowman, you hit the green check mark, and it's like, well, that wasn't so bad. There's those snowmen. Okay, it wasn't so bad at all. It was kind of easy. Okay, now it's kind of like on one single pixel point for the bottom. If I wanted to really make it cool, I'd mush it up a little bit. We might do that later. Okay, a little mushy there, right? Yeah. See, yes. But see, I have to keep the lower denominator, like two. You can be the six. Okay, you good? Subtle hints, right? All right, what do you want to do next on this puppy dog? Do the arms. Of course, you'd want to do the arms. Okay. Yay, here we go. Go to your front view again then. Reorient yourself to front. So at this point, um, it was said we might be want a flatter bottom. If there's you whenever you are in a drawing, you can go back and change anything. Okay. But again, this isn't really real, it's just fake real. Okay, it's kind of like the whole last 20 years of your life. Uh, you're all just fake. Yes, someone dreamed you up. Okay. Yeah, it's this this wipe out two generations we find. All right. So I want to change the bottom of my snowman to be a little more flat. Okay. So if I go through my structure tree, I've got my hat, my hat, my body. Okay. Now this is the feature is what you're seeing here. The arrow lets me see the sketch that's inside the feature. Now both of these can be edited individually of the other. I want to edit the sketch, the original. So I put my cursor on sketch, whatever number that is for you, because some of you are sketch 23 now, not sure how, but you are. If you right click, there's an eyeball. The eyeball hides and shows your what's in that selection. So you can hide the body and just have the hat. You can hide the hat and just have the body. That's why we kept the top of the head, okay? But if I go up, I'm in edit sketch, it's right above the eyeball, it says edit the sketch. So I click on it. Oh, well, there's my blue lines undefined because they don't, I cut them. If I just take a line now, come somewhere up on my vertical and notice the center line is now solid black from the top of the arc to the bottom. It's changed its nature. So we adopted that fourth cousin twice removed and married them. Oh. Did you guys know you can marry your second cousin and legally do that? Yeah, it's cousins, cousins are okay, but yeah, it's kind of crazy little loophole in the law. That's in case no one else loves you. Guys go to family. Okay, so I'm just gonna take and grab this line and just gonna drive a line across. You choose where you want to flatten that out. Okay, your choice. Just choose that. They use the trim tool. Just draw a lot. Edit. Where'd you get lost at, Atticus? Where? At? <laughs> yeah, which? Okay. 
I see what you're doing. I've got to maximize the slide before I work. Do the arrows. Right there, right click. But you got to get in the right view so you're facing us. Right view. Just for a line. Okay. Then, oh, Donato. It's okay, man. I also went to Meta C. That was bad. Not well. Okay. No. So we've got to edit all the work that's going on in the wall. So you're editing up here. So we've got to know all this. Like that. And then just draw a line. Okay. Oh. Good. Here we go. Sure. I'm going to walk over there. Move your hand goes up. Oh, I'm going to do it. Right. Come on. Okay, so we got to trim first. We've got to do the trim. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, it'll come back automatically. That's just automatic. So as soon as you exit, you see it. Okay. Now, for some of you going, hey, 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 it, it, it doesn't show me preview anymore. It, it, oh, what? Uh, you can't find the button. I think my two year old said that one time. Where's the button, Daddy? I don't your hand. Just hold it off the shirt. All right. Okay, I'm going to get through here. Open the other way. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, the one you listen to is probably dirty. Probably got bad words in it. Okay. If the yellow preview goes away, there's usually two reasons for why I did that. One, you're in edit mode, which is generally what happens. Uh, the other is I've got an endpoint of a line that's sticking outside my profile. If you have, if I was to try and close the sketch now, it would air out because I've got a line that's not creating a profile. All your 3D models must be closed profiles somehow closed, either with a center line or a line, okay? So the trim I'm gonna use here, is gonna use the corner trim because it's quicker. And I go from the arc to the line, snip that off, and the line on the inside to the flat and trim that off. Notice my center line's back, it was underneath. So in this case, SolidWorks drew for me a solid line over the center line. So I had a closed profile. That was the air message it gave us. 
hey, you're not following the rules, but I'm going to fix it for you. Just like I'm your teacher. So check that off. Now, once I get to this point and I hit edit the sketch, exit the sketch, it updates and fixes everything. Okay. So again, you can go back and fix things. You just have to know what part you want to fix. So here's how you do that. Again, this is the demo. We'll be working the demo for a couple of days. So what's going to happen for you guys on? So tomorrow is Friday. Oh gosh. So I see you guys get Monday. I think B days are getting screwed. I really do, but whatever. Um, when you guys come on Monday, you're gonna finish up what you need to do on your um, on your birdhouse. So you're gonna work on your birdhouse from 7:45 to 8:45. Okay. Mechanical three from 7:45 to 8:45. We're gonna work on the do nothing machine together. Okay. All right. So you get some time. Then we're gonna switch. You guys are gonna switch back to doing um, your whatever parts you need to finish up. And we're gonna go back and come back into the snowman for the last step. Okay, does that make sense? Anybody confused about Monday? It's the day after Sunday, if you forgot. Yeah. Until we fix the calendar to the right way. Okay. All right, so we want to do arms. Here they come. We're going to do, yes. How do you get out of back to this mode? X of the sketch. Top right hand corner. Got it? Okay. We're going to do a new sketch. Woohoo. Start a sketch. And oh, what plane should we draw? Well, where would the arms be on this snowman? In the front, probably in the middle of the body. Okay. So now you want, if you're on the right plane, the arms come out of his chest and his back. He's an Egyptian. Right? So we want to be on the front plane. So we're drawing across because the plane. And you can come in here. If I come to my front plane, if I right click and I click on that, it gets me back. So there's my cursor again, my, my coordinate system, sorry, coordinate system. If you want to see the plane, you can come over to front plane, right click and hit the eyeball. If you hit that eyeball, you'll see the plane will stay shown and we can turn it. We can see where the arm is going to be. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to keep this relatively simple. We're going to do just two sticks. I'm not going to get into fingers with you right yet because that's a little advanced. So we're just going to do a stick. Okay. So I'm going to take a line and come somewhere where the, oh man, never mind. Save your work and pick it up. I thought we had another 20 minutes. Okay. Save, call it S-man or snowman and we'll see you Monday. Didn't quite get to the arms. So sorry, everybody. I was excited. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. I'll post this recording for you, Frank. Thank you. Yes.